When dealing with different types of materials, uh, we are often interested in knowing things such as what are the maximum normal stresses out of all possible directions and what are the maximum shear stresses in the system out of all possible planes. And this question arises in regard to the fact that we typically calculate stresses in convenient coordinate systems, but the maximum normal stresses and the maximum shear stresses may not appear in those coordinate frames. We may actually have to transform the coordinate frames to see what the actual maximal values are. And these maximal values are really important for determining the load-bearing capacity of different types of materials. Some materials, particularly brittle materials like cast iron, rock, cement, and things like that are very sensitive to normal stresses, whereas ductile materials tend to be sensitive to shear stresses. So we'd like to know what the maximum normal stresses are out of all possibilities and what are the maximum shear stresses out of all possibilities. And we're in a good position to be able to calculate this now because we have a general expression for the normal stresses in all possible directions. We'll do these in 2D. And all I have to do is take the derivative of that expression with respect to the orientation of the axis and set that equal to 0. And I can solve for the angle. And that will then tell me what the angle is that gives me the maximum normal stresses. So taking the double angle form, well, the transformation relationship, I can take its derivative once with respect to theta, and I have this relationship of minus the difference between sigma x, sigma y, sine 2 theta plus 2 sigma x, y, cosine 2 theta. So that gives me that derivative, and I could set that equal to 0, and I could solve for the angle, and we call that angle theta p. It's known as the principal angle, and it's one half the arc tangent of twice the shear divided by the difference of the two normal stresses. Um, now, this equation here, when you take arctangent, there are different types of there are different branches of, of, of the arctangent function, and so it actually gives two unique solutions. The first one is a maximum, and that's what we call the principal angle theta p, and the second one is it gives us a minimum. But we're interested in the maximum normally, so we'll choose the root of these two that gives us the maximal value. Uh, now we can take this real expression here, we can plug it back into the expression for sigma xx. And we can actually, or also the expressions for sigma uh, y prime y prime and also sigma x prime y prime. So we can evaluate all the stresses in the principal coordinate frame. And if we do that, we actually find out that the shear is always 0 in the principal coordinate frame. So that's one way you can decide whether the axes that you have in a problem are already in the principal orientation. That's when the shear stress will be 0. Uh, the normal stress in the x direction, the, the term that gives us the maximum, is here. It's, it's the average value in the x and the y direction plus this radical here. And the no, normal stress in the y prime direction is actually the minimum value. So we have a minus sign here. We have the same mean stress subtracting off the exact same radical there. If I draw the stress in the principal coordinate frame on a, a stress element, it has a look as shown over here. It's an element. It's rotated at some angle theta p. And it has a normal stress, which we usually call sigma 1. That's the maximum value. And the second principal stress is sigma 2. And that's the minimum value. So the max and the min principal stresses appear in a coordinate frame oriented at angle theta p. And we often call these axes 1 and 2. So those are the principal uh, coordinate axes, the principal 1 and the principal 2. The 1 by convention we take to be larger than the 2 value there. If we want to do the shear or answer the same question about shear, we need to take the derivative of the shear stress in any arbitrary coordinate frame with respect to theta and set that equal to 0. So doing that using the double angle form of the of the transformation laws, we have this expression here. And we can solve this for theta p, or, or sorry, theta. And in this case, we call it theta s. That's the maximum shear angle. And it has a form that's quite similar to the one for the principal angle. It's 1 half the arc tangent. But the argument here is minus 1 over the argument that we had for the principal angle. And again, there's two solutions here. One gives us a maximum. That's the one that we call theta s. And then the second solution gives us a minimum but we're usually interested in the maximum value here. If I plug back in the transformation laws and evaluate them for theta s, 
I find out that the normal stress in the maximum shear frame is the same in both directions. It's actually the mean value, sigma xx plus sigma yy over 2. And then the shear stress in this coordinate frame, so that's the, the maximum value of the shear stress, is actually equal to that radical that we had before uh, when we we're calculating principal stresses. If I go ahead and draw the stresses in the maximum shear frame, I have a picture that looks as follows. I end up with normal stresses, which are sigma mean, uh, same in the x prime and the y direction, and we have the shear stress on the x prime, y prime basis. So that's this relationship here. That's tau max. That's the maximum shear stress there in this system. Um, just one quick remark. Uh, one could calculate tau max by taking the principal stresses, sigma 1 and sigma 2, different, taking their difference and dividing by 2. That actually does give you tau max. We'll see why that is in a little bit, but it's a handy fact to know. Uh, it's also useful to know that there's a relationship between theta s and theta p, and that has to do with the fact that th theta p was equal to 1 half the arctangent of 2 sigma xy over sigma xx minus sigma yy. So you can see that there's a there's a connection here between the arguments of the arctangent function. And you can draw a little triangle to represent the arctangent here. If I put a unit value on the horizontal length here and x, where x is this argument of twice the shear divided by the difference of the normal stresses, I can draw this little triangle here that shows a relationship between 2 theta p and minus 2 theta s. And so if you just look at that figure there, you can see immediately that the difference between the, the principal angle and the maximum shear angle is just 45 degrees. So if you've calculated one, you can easily calculate the other.